today's video diary is a step-by-step -step guide on how I made a potting shed for my granddad for free. First off, we're going to need a hell of a lot of wood. So we've come to the wood store in Brighton. They've just moved to the Lewis Road and these guys have just offered gold. So I've estimated that we're going to need at least, uh, we're going to need about 10, 10 pallets in total. Uh, four for the side, two at the front, two up the, up the edge, and the rest is just going to be cosmetic work. They've also got a bunch of timber over there, so we're going to have a look at that. So we were just driving down the road, and we found these. So basically, I'm going to take these and use a uh, worm composting bin. But we'll do a video about those later on. Next up is to find a nice level area. I've chosen to build the potting shed in this section of the garden because it seems to get most amount of sun throughout the day and I should get some really nice support off the garage wall. This post being used as a concrete border actually used to be a washing line attached here. Unfortunately the concrete footings of this post were so deep I had to waste an entire day breaking it down with a sledgehammer. I'm happy with the results because now I can use the concrete post to raise the floor to stop the pallets from rotting. I'm using two pallets for the floor, I've cut off each end so they fit flush against the wall and it'll give me a nice overhang lip for the front. I've just cut the tops off the side pallets, this has given me an overhang so it should give me some more support once I've screwed them in place. Doing it this way has given me a really nice flat top so I can lay a window sill for the windows later on. Now I need to fill these holes with cladding which I'm going to use by splitting up pallets. Ok, uh, you're going to need a crowbar and a hammer. First off, try and get the crowbar right in where the uh, nails are so you don't end up splitting the wood. <laughs> it would have to be one of the wettest days in British summer for me to do this. I'm just going to speed this up because as you can see it takes a bit of time. Then what you want to do, get the claw hammer, come in with the nails. You need to keep these nails we're going to use these later. Right, carry on doing that for another three more pallets. Once you strip down the pallets, you'll have a whole heap of nails like this. So if you're fortunate, you might actually get a couple that are fairly straight. But nine times out of ten, they're going to come out quite curved. So all you need to do is straighten them out. Get the top end down there and the arc facing upwards. Just get your hammer, gently tap them. Don't use too much force because you'll weaken the nails. Try not to hit your finger like I did, and they'll come out a lot straighter and you'll be able to use them again. So, we've got a tip off that this place in uh, Portslade over. Advanced Glass has got a skip full of doors and glass, so we're going to dig in, they've given us permission, always check first, my mate Ryan's going to help out. So the... Just as we were filming, the skip company turned up to take the skip away, but thankfully the guy stuck around and let us take whatever we wanted. That goes to show how lucky you've got to be, and if you see something in a skip, you've got to get permission and get it then and there. We nearly missed out on all of this stuff, we've managed to get two doors strip loads of hinges and a hell of a lot more screws. We've also got about six panes of glass that we can use later on. Not sure what yet, but we'll figure something out. Uh, we've also put a wanted sign on a Facebook group called Everything Free. Uh, we're waiting to hear back from a guy who's promised us some roofing. So, fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Okay, so I've decided to change the plan slightly. I was gonna use these pieces as cladding on the front and just nail them in. And I realized that's gonna take up six pieces of wood. So it's going to be a lot better if I just cut this down the centre and use it like this. As you can see, the smaller pieces fit in between really nicely and it makes the whole thing look a lot more flush. 
and it's uh, a lot better finished. Okay, so we had a bit of a storm last night, so there's loads of bits and pieces all inside, but you can see where I've changed the floor as well. I've cut the pieces in between, so it all fits nice and snug. It's a lot flatter floor than the original design that I was going to do. Uh, I've also put the sides on exactly the same. I've added these bits of 2x4 just to give you a bit more structural support. Uh, I did try to, to drill into this but it's just pure concrete. So this main support goes from one end to the other now. That's really sturdy, it's a pretty good idea. Now we've got these roof supports in. I haven't actually properly screwed those in yet. Managed to get some battening for the windows. This is all coming on together. Also used a bit of battening down this side and cut some spare pieces. Just show you around the front. So it's all a bit of cosmetic, rather nice, just to make it all a bit more sheddy. Just need to find out and get some pieces down here. Actually, I might. Uh, got a load of bits of wood here, so I'm going to just try and uh, use up some scrap. That looks pretty good. So, uh, the other good news is, uh, other than the fact that it's been raining for five days solid, uh, the guy that's offered us the roof has said that we should be able to get it delivered in the next couple of days. So, we'll wait and see. Today I also finished the door frame. I've used two upright timbers and a 4x2 at the top which I got from a pallet. I've also used some offcuts down the side to cover up any gaps. Best part of the day is the roof turned up. We've managed to get some scrap offcut pieces. Uh, it's chucked in a load of screws and uh, waterproof washers. Uh, so should, we should be able to crack on today. Fitting a roof is a two-man job, so my dad's kindly stepped in to give me a hand. First job is to make some fascia plates to fit underneath the corrugated roofing. These are made by cutting planks to size, using an off-cut piece of roofing and drawing around it. Then just use a jigsaw to cut out the curves. Once these are made, make sure that each fascia plate is level and screw them onto the main building. These plates are fitted to prevent any wind getting underneath the sheets and damaging them. One done. Every good job is always helped along by a nice cup of tea and a few biscuits from Grandad. We've also made some fascia plates to fit at the back so the sheets have something to sit on and it's a much tighter finish. This can be a bit tricky so take your time. That's it, that's the one. And we're in. Always count to sink the holes first to help the screws go in straight. Screwing using the raised section of the sheet, this prevents any water from getting underneath and it'll run straight off. The more you put in, the less flat you're going to get. Perfect. That's it. Then we do a long. Along there as well, all the way along the front. So the roof's now finished. Uh, we've still got a load of screws left over. Uh, the guy gave us 50, and we've uh, managed to use only 25. So I'm going to put these on Gumtree. Uh, the other good bit of news today is this is obviously completely optional. Uh, most pallets are already treated, uh, but as we don't know what what they've been treated with, uh, Dad's given us some of this. Uh, he was painting the garden fence of it, so we're going to try and paint this on and, and see what happens. So we're just going to open this up, see how much we've got. Yeah, it's just under half. So I've never used this stuff before, so uh, with a bit of luck we should get enough. It is water based, so give it a really good stir before. And uh, we're going to paint some on, see what happens. 
hopefully, yeah, that's not going to be too dark. That's going to look quite nice. Great, let's get painting. So we've got some bad news. Uh, the door that we were going to put onto the shed is completely rotten. There's no way that we'll be able to use this. So we're going to have to go back to the drawing board to find out another way of putting the door on the shed. Windows are going in. Well exciting. As we hadn't fit the inside window frame yet, it was a good idea to paint them before we nailed them on. Now usually, if you had the stain beforehand, I would have painted it before we put the roof on, but uh, unfortunately we've already put the roof on, so I've just got a, a piece of magazine. Try and get some waxy, glossy magazine, because this is water-based paint, so uh, it will soak in if it's not glossy. And just use it so it doesn't hit on the roof. And then uh, just carry on going through like that. So if you do manage to get a little bit on the roof in, just get a little little towel, and go underneath, and just rub it off. The handy thing is, is that it is water based, so it's really no no problem if you do get it on a plastic. There you go. So the door we found is a no go, so I've decided to make it out of pallets. What I'm going to do is just use these like this. I'm going to put an outer frame on, so one at the bottom, one at the top, one down each side, and then a diagonal structural support. Um, it's going to give me an extra space, so I might even put a barn door in it now. So it's going to give me an opportunity to open the top section during the day if it gets too hot. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to get on with this and see what happens. So I went with a stable door idea in the end, uh, as you can see, they're going to be two separate parts. We've got enough hinges from what we stripped off the, the doors from earlier, so we uh, just need to paint them up and put them on. Right, so here are the hinges we stripped off at uh, Advanced Glass. These all come off old doors, some of them are painted shut. I know. That one's alright. Um, so what we're going to use, I think we're going to go with these ones, they are a little bit rusty. but. Um, it means that we don't have to cut in a recess like these ones um, and they, they should be better for a stable door so uh, yeah we're going to go ahead and put the door on just make sure that the back end part of the hinge is hanging over the side of the door in order not to make the door too tight then just screw it in I've also managed to get some gutter in from a pub that was about to be converted into flats so we're going to add this to the side of the building so we can collect rainwater. Some of the longer pieces have warped due to age so we're just going to cut those off and use the better parts. These end sections are also from a different part of the guttering so we're having a job to fit them. We should get there in the end. We also noticed that if we fit the guttering on the fascia plates then it's not going to catch the rain so we have to cut a little recess into each timber. Got it? Can you see him? He's up on, up on this roof now. Uh -huh. The other roof. He's right up here. He comes along. He's coming along now. Go Got on. a little friend already. So, despite this saying it was a one coat paint, we've actually put two coats on some of it. But we've still only used a quarter of what we were given, so we've still got plenty left in case it needs it. 
I'm not going to paint the inside because I don't think it needs it. Uh, today it's been a hard slog. We've managed to get the gutter in on. It goes all the way around here. And this was going to be a, water, a proper water barrel. But unfortunately uh, we've, we've split it as we try to move. So you see where it's split. I'm not too happy. Um, so I, I can't cut the downpipe in yet until we, we try and source another one or figure out if we're just going to use this or not. But we've, we've cracked on quite well today. So I finally fitted the door today. Hell of a lot of hard work, but we managed to do it. I forgot one little thing, was the door handle. I've managed to take this off an old bedroom unit, but it's going to have to do for now until I can find something better. We've also stripped the, the lock off the other door. Um, but the main problem was... We didn't check that this hinge here actually was bent, so it's made the door a little bit loose. We had to plane some off the top, but we've now put the stable door in nice and fine. It's also got a lock on here. We just need to break the concrete up down on the floor. But once that's done, the door should open quite fine. And we just need to fill in these little gaps. And it's almost job finished. That's all I'm doing today, completely exhausted. See you tomorrow. Today I've got my little helpers with me. They're just putting on the second coat now. Say hello girls. Hello. hello. <laughs> we're almost finished painting. Okay, we're just going to make up some patches to cover up this hole. Darcy's just drawing it out. Straight line please. Very well done. Now we just cut those out and nail them on. Now to get a straight line, just use the saw. That gives you a straight edge and draw a line. Well done. Here we're just sanding off some old pencil marks. The dot to dot with nail holes is completely optional. So due to shrinkage, we've decided to rip these off and place them up again because there was a, a couple of mil gap in between. So we're just going to hammer them back in. I can do it myself. Can you? Go for it. Go for it. And do those all the way down. Is it fun making a shed, girls? Yeah. Seeing as my two nieces had so much fun filling in the gaps, I thought it best to let them finish the painting. Time to check out today's progress. As you can see, I've put a bolt on the inside of the door so the stable door can open nicely. I've used some leftover battening on the sides to plug up that hole. That now goes from top to bottom. And I've used some leftover pallets and 4x2s. There's the legs, there's a little potting desk, and this section I've used two leftover door hinges to let me collapse the desk to give me more space when I'm not potting. And now I'm just going to use these as the legs, and I'm going to show you how I've done that now. So I've cut my 4 by 2s to size. I've got two extra scrap blocks and a scrap piece I can drill into. I've got two feet that I've taken from a washing machine. These are going to bolt into each side so the legs can be removable. And a number 13 drill bit. All I need to do is just drill straight in on each piece and then through the legs. Now you don't really need to measure these pieces but roughly in the centre would be great. Now 
and just sand those bits off. Do the same with the other one. So I've set the bench up how I want to. I've roughly just set the 4x2 loosely just to hold it and give it some support. Now all I need to do is just screw that in from the top and then drill in through this hole straight through to the other leg. Now as I'm nearing the end of the project I'm slowly running out of reclaimed screws so I've got the choice of going for some short thicker ones or some longer ones. I think I'm going to go with the longer ones this time. Fingers crossed it's actually going to work. To make it easy on myself I've just measured whereabouts the block's going to go and whereabouts the hole is so I don't end up screwing through where the hole's going to be. That should make it a lot easier. Now this is probably complete overkill but I've made my life easier by drilling, screwing them in halfway. Now this goes to the side, I've marked it as the top. That goes in right next to the leg. Now all you need to do is just hold it in place and screw it in tight. Now you fix the block in place, you just need to screw through or drill through and get You just need to make a mark on the leg, once that's done pull it free and drill through using a flat surface. Now what you do is just align the leg up with the block, put the bolt in there's enough on this side, if you want to put a permanent bolt in, you can. We've got them here, but I'll just probably leave them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to make a free shed. I hope you've enjoyed this project. I've had a great time making a shed for Grandad. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you've liked the video. Write any comments below if you have any questions, and please subscribe. I'll see you next time.